So why did Maddox sue Patreon? He said basically that he told him what's going on. He told him how Dick Masterson was harassing him, how there's a whole community out there that speak and interact through Patreon, but while off of the site, harass him, threaten him, threaten his girlfriend. He was talking to some low-level employee at Patreon and he told him the problems. And that employee at Jordan Co. promised him he'll do something about it. They'll look into it. He'll pass that information on to somebody else. But they didn't. Or at least he never heard from them again. But he kept sending information and in return he got nothing. They must owe me something. They must owe me some obligation. They need to let me know exactly what's going on. They need to stop this. They need to know that somebody using their platform, when they're off-site, when their fans are off-site, when people related to him are completely off-site, they are harassing me. And if they're not going to listen, if they're not going to do something, I'm going to sue them. Well, today, Patreon responds. And what do you think? Motion to dismiss like everybody else. For what? If nothing else, lack of personal jurisdiction. What the hell are we doing in New York? By the way, if you have any comments, any concerns, anything you want to talk about, leave some comments below or better yet. Come Thursday to the live event. Bring any questions you might have. Hi, my name is Leo Lester. I'm a tech lawyer and this, this is YouTuber Law. And today we're going to go through the motion to dismiss. In fact, really the memo in support of the motion to dismiss. What's the big thing? What the hell are we doing here? Why are we in New York? Let's just jump in right in and take a look exactly what they're saying. And here we have the memo of law on behalf of defendants Patreon Inc. and Jordan Cope in support of their motion to dismiss. And let's jump right into the argument number one, the court lacks personal jurisdiction over Patreon and Mr. Cope. In New York, the party asserting jurisdiction bears the burden of proving the basis for personal jurisdiction. Accordingly, plaintiffs must allege jurisdictional contacts which, if proven, would be sufficient to demonstrate that the exercise of personal jurisdiction jurisdiction is proper under either New York's general jurisdiction statute or its long-arm statute. If you remember from our discussion on personal jurisdiction, every state has jurisdiction over people within its state. But what happened when you try to draw people that live outside of your borders? What is the basis for that? That's when the long-arm statute comes in. Defendants are not subject to general jurisdiction in New York. A foreign corporation is subject to general personal jurisdiction if it has engaged in such a continuous and systematic course of doing business in New York that a finding of its presence in this jurisdiction is warranted. Bottom line, there has to be a basis for you to draw people in. There has to be some continuous business, some engagement within the state of New York that would justify drawing people that otherwise residing outside of the state to New York. Plaintiffs have alleged no facts to support a finding of general jurisdiction, as they simply state that Patreon is conducting business in New York, New York. And that's true. With respect to every single defendant who wasn't residing in New York, the plaintiff gave no explanation of what it means. Why do, does this court have personal jurisdiction? Except by saying they engage in some business. Patreon is a Delaware limited liability company with its headquarters in, and offices in San Francisco, California. It has no offices in New York, owns no real property, bank accounts, or other assets in the state, and is not authorized to conduct business in New York. Patreon also has no employees in New York. So what is Patreon's connection to New York then? Patreon's only connection with New York is that of approximately 4% of its user base happens to be located in New York, which is insufficient to confer jurisdiction under CPLR 301. See, all we know so far is that only 4% of their user base is located in New York. Could be part of the patrons who are donating money, could be some of the artists who are residing in New York, but 4% only. New York is not significantly more or less important than any other state for Patreon's business, and the fact that it has registered users located in the state is insufficient for general jurisdiction. And it's not as if New York is somehow more important than the other 49 states or any other foreign country. There's nothing necessarily unique about New York relative to other places. As for Mr. Cope, he is domiciled in California and has never visited New York. And Jordan Cope, what's his connection to New York? He has never traveled to New York, never lived in New York. He has never even stopped over in New York on a flight from Europe to California. He has never been there. So not really. And so we can take all that together and say, you know what? There is no basis for any sort of general jurisdiction in New York. But how about the whole concept of a long arm? Can 
Patreon be pulled in? Can Jordan be pulled in from California using New York's long arm statutes? Defendants are not subject to long arm jurisdiction. Plaintiffs are both residents of California and they do not allege that they suffered an injury in New York. Likewise, they do not identify any purported tortious conduct by Patreon or Mr. Cove that took place in New York. So what would be a basis to go out of state and pull them in? What did Patreon and Jordan Cope do to merit that? Well, even the plaintiffs themselves do not reside in New York. They reside in California. The plaintiff themselves never alleged that anything happened to them in New York. As far as all of the causes of action that refer to Jordan Cope and to Patreon, none of that discusses anything that would have happened in New York. Basically, all they can say is that Patreon and Jordan Cope somehow did not act appropriately. But if that happened, that would have had to have been in California because the offices of Patreon are in California. There's no offices in New York, no employees in New York. And Jordan Cope works out of the California office. He lives in California. He lives out there in San Francisco. So what would be the basis to claim that New York is the proper jurisdiction? In order to determine whether a personal jurisdiction exists under CPLR 30281, a court must determine whether defendant transacted business in New York, and if so, whether the causes of action asserted arose from that transaction. To satisfy the second prong of the test, there must be an articulable nexus or a substantial relationship between defendant's in-state activity and the cause of action asserted. Basically, some action would have had to have a direct connection to New York. Something they did would have had to cause the damages that, uh, that Maddox is claiming. While Patreon may conduct business in New York for purpose of CPLR 302A1, it is evident that there is no nexus between plaintiff's claim and Patreon's contacts in New York. How are you going to claim that any act taken by Patreon or Jordan Cope had a direct connection some nexus with New York. They don't live there. You don't live there. You never claim that anything happened to you in New York. If anything, it all happened out there in California because that's where they live. What's where the company operates. Two, Mr. Ozunian's claims cannot be brought in this forum. His claims can only proceed in California. So take all of that together. In this case, belongs in California. No real connection to New York. But more than that, because what Patreon is saying is that when Ozunian himself signed up for a Patreon account, he signed the terms of service. He clicked, I agree. And in those terms of service, any sort of dispute is going to be governed by California law in California court. So how can he ignore all of that and now say, no, 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 I want to uh, have a case in uh, New York. Now, you, you have to look at it from both sides of it. Let's think about it from Maddox's side for a second. He, he would say that... This has nothing to do with my account with Patreon. This has nothing to, go, to do with the agreement that I signed between myself and Patreon through the terms of service. If I argued that there was actually a breach of contract, if I said, that, look, you promised certain things under the terms of service and you didn't deliver, then you're right, I would have to sue in California. But in here, my lawsuit has nothing to do with the terms of service, has nothing to do with the contract itself. It has everything to do with me as an individual giving you warning because you're inviting the public to give you information about what's happening on your website. You are leading me to believe that something will be done. So to the extent to which he feels that certain uh, duties owed to him, he would say that this has nothing to, to do with the terms of service. This is to do with just me as a citizen talking to you. You owe me some duty as a result of me reporting information and asking you to handle it. Now, understanding from Patreon side said, well, no, because the entire allegations you're making you're talking about you as a Patreon user. You are contacting Jordan Cope, who is there to represent, to provide, take your information and provide it to the working groups within Patreon. So you're not operating as a citizen calling some hotline without any real connection. You're speaking to your own representative, who is your representative because you signed the terms of service, because you are on Patreon, because you are making money through Patreon. So if you are suing us because of that relationship, that relationship is due to your signature so actually everything that that goes on here all the claims that you're bringing up is it is subject to the terms of service which according to them will needs to be brought within California B even if venue was proper Mr. Azunian agreed to arbitration so what goes on in there because well it's a very very common in terms of service especially among larger companies that say look I cannot be drawn into lawsuit every single time. The whole process takes very very long and there's no certainty of exactly how it's all gonna come out 
when you sign up to an account, you agree to arbitration. Mandatory arbitration means that we are all communally going to decide on who is going to be the arbitrator. Could be an attorney, could be uh, an ex-judge. We're going to give him the information. Whatever he decided is binding. We're not going to go through the entire lawsuit process. They put it into their terms of service, which he signed. They say, well, not only did you agree that this will be done in California, subject to California law, you also agreed that this is going to start with mandatory arbitration. As a result, you can actually sue us in court, not in any court, but definitely not in a court outside of California. Three, the causes of action should be dismissed for failure to state a claim. And here they're going to go beyond the issue of personal jurisdiction and say, you know what? Plus, the rest of what you're saying is complete nonsense. Negligent failure to warn is a product's liability tort that does not fit the facts of this case. As is particularly relevant here, there can be no valid claim for negligent failure to warn where the plaintiff is already aware of the relevant hazard. Remember, he's calling Patreon. He's picking up the phone, speaking to Jordan Cope, said, this is what Dick Masterson is doing. This is what his fans are doing. You've got to look into it. You've got to stop this. This is killing me, right? And they're saying, we'll look into it. He's providing them with the information, but he's suing them for not warning him of the very things that he is telling them. How can he claim that they were negligent in providing him information, in warning him, when in fact, he's the one who's providing that information? Plaintiff theory fails for the additional reason they do not allege that a warning about Mr. Herrera and his collaborators would have been effective in preventing an injury. Even if Patreon had sent plaintiffs a warning that Mr. Herrera and his collaborators appeared to be engaging in harassment, there was no additional protection they could have taken to avoid the hazard that they did not already undertake or had been previously informed of. So Patreon is saying, look, even if we provided whatever warning we needed to provide you about information that you already knew because you gave it to us, that's how we knew about it, how would that have stopped anything? We're talking about actions taken off of Patreon on some third party website by either an individual that has an account on Patreon or his fans. How will our investigation and now telling you about what's happening, if we knew about this harassment, how will that help you in any way? That's what you fail to show, how our actions or inaction in any way caused damage to you. With respect to Jane Doe, Patreon had no duty to warn her because she is not a Patreon user and it had no way to contact her. That makes sense. B. Fraud. To establish a cause of action for fraud, plaintiffs must plead with particularity that Patreon and Mr. Cope knowingly made false uh, representation. They intended to defraud Mr. Ozunian. Three, Mr. Ozunian reasonably relied on the material false representation. And four, Mr. Ozunian suffered damages as a result thereof. So if you're going to sue us for fraud, basically you got to show that we lied in an attempt to defraud you, you relied on it, and it caused you damages. Plaintiff's fraud claim fails in the first instance because they have not identified any actionable misrepresentation or omission. So for starters, you never actually explain what we lied about. You have to when it comes to fraud. What did we misrepresent? Well, you're saying that we took that information, we said we'll pass it on to somebody, we'll look into it, statements of th that nature. And yet you never allege that none of that happened. You never allege that we never passed that information or that no investigation actually happened. What your complaint is that we didn't come back to. There was some sort of a promise that we'll come back to you with some findings and that was not done. The problem is that was really an expression of where things are going right? How can I not say that? If that does not happen because there are intervening uh, circumstances, I'm not able to get back to you. That does not mean that I lied, that I misrepresented you, what I was intending to do with intent to defraud you. That just means that I expected to come back to you, but I wasn't able to. There are a lot of reasons why I would not be able to, right? I mean, we may have run through the investigation and found that it's extremely sensitive. And as a result, for legal reason, we cannot come back to you and provide you that information. There could be absolutely valid reasons for that. And the fact that I said something that then didn't materialize doesn't make it a lie upon, upon which fraud was based. Plaintiffs have not specified how Mr. Cope's statement that he would update Mr. Ozunian on Patreon's investigation caused the letter to take or refrain from any action. See, you have to tell us how you relied on our misrepresentation. You claim that we said that we'll get back to you with some results of the investigation. That's great. 
but how did you rely on it? What happened there? Did you sit around waiting because you were waiting for the answer and as a result of waiting for the answer, you were actually hurt by it? You have to go through the process of actually explaining not only what we lied about, but basically how you relied on it because it's all your reliance It's going to be then be connected to damages caused. The fact that Mr. Ozunian continued to email Mr. Cope and other internet websites about Mr. Herrera suggests that he did not sit idly by and wait for Patreon to provide him with an update. And that's really a good catch for Patreon's uh, side because Mr. Maddox keep talking how he kept uh, email providing more information to Jordan Cope even though he never got back to him with any information about the investigation. Well, if I am keep sending you information, I'm obviously complaining. I'm obviously telling you all, all this is happening. Nothing is stopping. I'm complaining about it. So you did not seem to have actually stopped. You did not refrain from doing something because you relied on me coming back to you with some investigation results. Finally, plaintiffs have not alleged how they were damaged by Mr. Cope's statement. And last, you have to tell me how through all of that, by me lying, by you relying on it, how you were actually damaged by it. Remember, all he ever said was that I will get back to you. And you say, I never got back to you. Okay, if I didn't get back to you and you acted in a certain way because you relied somehow on the promise that I will get back to you, even though I never gave you any specific action that I would take, just that I would come back to you. How is that related to the damages? After all, all the damages you complained about are directly associated with what the fans of The Dick Show did. Nothing I would have come back with would somehow would have stopped th that damage. C. Deceptive Trade Practices As a preliminary matter, the General Business Law GBL Section 349 claim must be dismissed because New York Courts of Appeal have held that it only applies to misconduct that took place in New York. And as we said before, nothing happened in New York. If anything, it happened in California. To state a claim under GBL Section 349, a plaintiff must allege consumer-oriented conduct that is materially misleading and that the plaintiff suffered injury as a result of the allegedly deceptive act or practice. As noted above, plaintiffs have not alleged Patreon and Mr. Cope made any actionable statement and thus there is no deceptive conduct that could have served as the basis for such claim. They have also not alleged any injury. So basically the GBL Section 349 states that basically if I lie about an item, right? I lie about the quality of the phone. In the process, you relied on it and you suffer damages. You can hold me liable under that section. But where do you point to that in telling you that I will get back to you? That would not fall as a consumer-oriented statue. That does not show that I somehow defrauded you, that I misstated, and the result, you suffer damages. D, promissory estoppel. To establish a claim for promissory estoppel, it must be shown that the defendants made a clear and unambiguous promise upon on which the defendant reasonably relied to his or her detriment. This claim should be dismissed because plaintiffs have not alleged a specific promise and, as with their fraud claim, they have not pled the facts to show reasonable reliance or actions taken to their detriment. So under promissory estoppel, the idea is that I made you a promise. You relied on that promise and as a result, you were hurt. What did I promise you? The fact that I will get back to you, that I will let you know what's going on, never promised anything that actually would be actionable. Never promised that I will do something. Never promised that I will actually take action that will resolve this problem. Where is the basis for promissory estoppel here? Conclusion. For the reasons stated herein, plaintiff's complaint against Patreon and Mr. Cope should be dismissed in its entirety. So what do you think of the response by Patreon and uh, Jordan Cope? I mean, bottom line is they're focusing on the single most important thing. This does not belong in New York. This, if in effect, belongs in California for a lot, a lot of different reasons. The fact that there's absolutely no connection, nobody, none of us live in New York. We're talking about the plaintiffs are out in California, the defendants are out in California. No action is actually being said that actually took place in New York. No damages took place in New York, at least not with respect to anything they claimed against Patreon and Jordan Cope. There is really no basis for general jurisdiction, no, no basis for long-arm statue. There is really no real reason why we'll be drawn there. That's the main part. Then they talk about how the rest of the stuff is complete nonsense, and they go through one by one very, very quickly, just saying there is no claim here which the court can help you. Tell me what you think. Tell me if they did a good job. If you have any questions, any concerns, anything you want to talk about, just leave them down below. I'd love to talk to you. I'll see you next time. <laughs>